Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Storer. I'm the Chief Executive of the Nuclear Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre. I'm going to talk about nuclear manufacturing and the, the uh, roadmap to net zero and the role that UK manufacturing can play. But before I do, I wanted to just refer back to a project at the start of the coronavirus, which was about the ventilator challenge. It was led by the catapult, of which we are one of seven centres in the high value manufacturing catapult. And we formed together uh, 23 companies across different sectors to knock down barriers uh, to increase the amount of ventilators that could be manufactured. As you can see there, you know, the production, normal production is around 50 ventilators a week. And by changing the method of manufacture, by taking barriers away, not taking no for an answer and working collaboratively, we managed at the end to get 400 a day manufactured. The reason I'm mentioning that is because I'll come back to it at the end when I'm going to talk about how I believe the nuclear sector needs to work differently. So net zero, this is a chart from the energy systems catapult. You can see in the sort of lime green colour where we are today in 2020 and the growth required between now and 2050. This isn't saying that nuclear is the only source of clean energy far from it. It's a, it's a system uh, issue. We need to have a combination of different types of clean energy. But it's clear that nuclear has an important role to play in this, uh, this roadmap, this journey. And so we've got large reactors today. A lot of those will be decommissioned around 2030, 2035. And so not only do we need to grow our energy, we need to replace those, um, those reactors that come offline uh, and increase the amount of electricity we get from the uh, nuclear reactors. The nuclear reactors could be large, but they could also be small and advanced. I'll touch on that in a moment. The opportunity for UK manufacturers isn't just about UK. There's a worldwide demand for clean energy. Um, and the UK, if we can move fast enough, can have position, uh, international position for deploying nuclear reactors, whether that's small or advanced reactors. And if the UK supply chain engages and demonstrates its match fit to work in the UK, there's no reason why it can't work internationally. Uh, and you can see the scale of opportunities that, that present themselves there. There are many types of small advanced reactors, generation three, generation four, over 100 uh, designs. I won't go into the details here about the, the pros and cons of each. Some are generation three, as I've said, which means they're light water reactors uh, of, a, of a type that we know and understand well today. Others are more advanced, uh, smaller, micro, um, but also help for cogeneration and hydrogen production, which can also lead to synthetic fuels for aircraft. So lots of other benefits of nuclear. The UK has um, taken on a UK SMR consortium approach. So, so Rolls-Royce are leading a consortium of those companies there across the bottom. So far, government have sponsored that programme for 18 million, and that's matched by the consortium, so a 36 million pound programme. Uh, we hope soon that that will be taken further to the next stage of development. Uh, but you know, if we can generate around 16 uh, power stations can be built, we can generate uh, the amount of electricity required just to, just to basically replace the, the uh, reactors that go out of service in the next decade or two. It could create 40,000 jobs and a significant amount of export potential. But as I said earlier, it's not just about generation three small reactors. There's also opportunities for generation four and fusion technologies as well. UKAA are um, working very closely now with other developers uh, around fusion. Uh, government have sponsored various uh, funding packages for UKAA to develop the fusion step reactor. Uh, there are also companies called Tokamak Energy, uh, others, others like that that are developing methods for deploying a fusion reactor. Um, the idea being that we could connect to the grid around 2040 or, or not far after 2040. So in between SMR and fusion, there are advanced reactors with organisations like Westinghouse, U-Battery, uh, et cetera, that could develop an advanced reactor, which would be generation four, which would really start to spearhead the UK in an, in an export market, as well as the fusion technologies being exportable as well. So the UK is really at the edge of a leading position, again, in the world of nuclear. In terms of nuclear MRC uh, and our role, what we do is try and change things. We try and disrupt the market 
So there's a project here that um, Rolls-Royce sponsored for some heat exchanges to go into a uh, European pressurized reactor for Hinkley Point. And um, put simply, the product cost was too high and there was a risk that the company wouldn't win the order and therefore the UK wouldn't win the contract. Through the Nuclear MRC, in partnership with Rolls-Royce, 80% uh, cost reduction was taken out of the assembly process, um, meaning that the cost could, could come tumbling down. EDF and Rolls-Royce reached an accord on the contract and that contract was then being delivered in the UK. When we talk about clean energy, we also need to look at the manufacturing process um, that we go through. So in the Nuclear MRC, we are currently manufacturing a two-thirds size reactor pressure vessel for a small modular reactor. In the normal manufacturing method, there's 1,800 kilograms of CO2 produced <clears throat> during the manufacturing process. We are currently throwing every single advanced manufacturing method that we can at that reactor pressure vessel, whether that be electron beam welding or CO2 machining, different ways of forming the materials, hipping, et cetera, et cetera. If we throw every single method at it, not only will the amount of days be reduced significantly to produce the product, but the amount of CO2 in the manufacturing process. So you can see on the right hand side there, single digit kilograms of CO2 production. So it's not just about nuclear being clean energy, it's the way we manufacture the products that um, can really affect the, the uh, carbon footprint. In terms of the UK's ability to uh, contribute to the nuclear plant, these products here are what I would call the high integrity reactor turbine island products. <clears throat> UK capability, UK capacity. So the UK capability is quite good. There are a few uh, ambers there, lots of green. So we know how to do things, but the capacity is where we struggle. That's the scale of manufacturing, the size of buildings, the machines, the forge, et cetera, et cetera, the cranage to hold the, the product, to lift the product. So you can see more reds when it comes to capacity. So the UK challenge is, can we build up the capacity and the scale for these, for the size of these gigawatt sized products? Well, quite frankly, given the fact that there are not a huge volume of products, it would make little sense for businesses to invest in increased capability and capacity. Well, we haven't got it already. But if we then play forward um, small modular reactors, because they are smaller, the capacity is different. You can start to see that actually we've got facilities that could hold reactor pressure vessel internals, um, could, could manufacture some of the, and assemble some of the large systems. So we've got a, a quicker readiness journey for small reactors. If there's the volume, which there should be for the, because they're smaller, um, then of course there's investment appetite from the supply chain. And, and we as Nuclear MRC can intervene to help. So all the advanced methods that we're developing for uh, um, the manufacturing for the supply chain, they can be adopted and put into a, a reactor plant that's not yet final at final design stage, which the small reactors and advanced reactors aren't. The larger reactors are already designed and now it's about reproducing um, a tried and tested method, whereas the small and advanced, we've yet to determine that tried and tested method and therefore offers massive opportunities for UK supply chain. And so what we do at Nuclear MRC again, we, we, we look at the demands across the industry, whether that be from decommissioning or it's from fusion reactors, so from one extreme to the other in terms of the sector. And this is a turbine hall, and you can see some tanks highlighted there. So we look around the companies that we work with in Fit for Nuclear, one of our flagship, flagship programs, there's 1,200 companies, and you can see there the LEP regions, and one highlighted in Wales, and there's seven companies there. So we identify those companies, and we try and work with them on that scope of work to make sure the UK is trying to win as much as possible, understands the opportunities that lie before them, but also the challenges. So as I close, I just wanted to um, stimulate a bit of thought really, hopefully for the debate that's to come later. The UK can manufacture small modular reactors in the UK. We have got some uh, capacity challenges, but we can overcome them. It will require investment in the supply chain. We understand where that investment is needed. Timing is going to be key. Timing is going to be key for ensuring that we develop these reactors against the time, time scale, which achieves our net zero targets, but also offers us an export opportunity. If we're too late to market, the export opportunity will reduce. We do have significant infrastructure already, 
We've got lots of innovation uh, from organizations like Nuclear MRC, National Nuclear Labs, et cetera. We now need to work better, smarter to a shared objective. So I want to come back to that ventilator challenge from 50 a week to 400 a day. That proves that we can do it. Coronavirus has proven that we've got weaknesses in some of our supply chain. We need to strengthen in areas against the nuclear supply chain. We can do this. We need to work better. We need a policy from government, which is clear. That will provide confidence to the supply chain. The supply chain will invest. It will invest if they're confident there's a program of work there. But most importantly right now, we need a coordinated, what I would call wartime approach, like the, like the ventilator challenge, to ensure that we knock down barriers and we work together to deliver this really important mission for, for UK today, but to our children and grandchildren to come. Thank you very much for listening. My contact details will be shown now, so if anybody would like to get in touch with a question, uh, then please do. Thank you for your time.